Good morning, good evening, good afternoon everybody. I hope you're all having a fabulous Sunday. It's Sunday afternoon, almost Sunday evening here and it's Graham's birthday today so I've made the effort to brush my hair and put on my only dress that is not covered in fiberglass and yes the windows are in and yes it rained yesterday and no they don't leak so we're really happy and that one doesn't leak either and the front three don't leak but you don't want to hear about that that's not what this video is all about this video is all about people back tracking not just tina brown um jack royston i can't now i i don't make videos you might have noticed every single day I don't just make videos for the sake of it about Meghan and Harry or the royal family. It's when something catches my attention because I'm doing other things in my life. But I couldn't help but notice this one. And it's, it's something I've actually been thinking about for the last few days. Now, any celebrity out there, any political party out there, anybody who has ever been tempted to or has actually used a PR firm, for example, like Sunshine Sacks, who say we can make you more popular than ever and they go out there whether it's known to the celebrity or not but they may go out there and pay troll farms and bot farms to give an illusion that the person is far more popular than they actually are don't do it do not do it because it might come back and bite you right in the arse now as a lot of you know, and welcome on board fellow earthlings, anyone who's new to the channel, where I started was really as a viewer of the original channels, Murky Taz and Wally. And I was very frustrated when I saw Christopher Boozy enter the fray and started bullying, actively bullying those three ladies, calling them middle-aged white housewives. That back in the day, remember all that? Everyone was racist. The whole of Britain was racist. The British press were racist. The royal family was racist. Oh, they've dumped that now. If you ask me, yes, they are getting divorced. Yes, I saw the announcement that someone had leaked Harry signed the divorce papers the other day. I can well believe that, actually. I don't think those two have been together for a very long time. I think <coughs> if Meghan's career, shall we call it, her a popularity career had taken off then or Harry's or both of them then I think they probably would have lived a marriage of convenience like in the olden days you know you, you go way back with the royal family and I don't mean George and Mary I believe George and Mary were happily married I mean if you go way back in the day there were certain royal marriages that were just a question of lay back and think of England so I think that if one of their careers had taken off they probably would have gone with that kind of really old fashioned marriage of convenience, which is just for a facade, which it would appear that certain Hollywood couples like to do. You know, Will Smith, Jada, whatever her name is, Meryl Streep, you know, they openly admit we got split up years ago. We just put on a pretense. Hmm. How fake. So then Jack Royston Newsweek comes out with this article and this is what got me thinking and he, he said it in the first paragraph. I'm not going to read any of it out to you except this one paragraph. And this struck me. The Duke of Sussex said, Meghan arrived with fans from her acting career who had an existing impression of who she was, making it harder for the media to mould her image. I know where he's going with this. I know what narrative is being written here. That all the psychopaths out there that we call the sugars, the ironic term for very far from sweet, the people who've been issuing death threats to you, to me, to the king and queen, to the prince and princess of Wales and their children, etc., etc. They are just Suits fans. They weren't employed by any PR agency. Excuse me. Whoop. Sorry, no, that narrative is not going to wash. I don't believe anyone who was a Suits fan for a start would have been a particular fan of Megan's, seeing as she was in each episode for a nanosecond. I did actually watch the episodes. I watched the first two episodes of Suits when I first heard who Harry was engaged to. I thought, what the hell is Suits? First episode was great. Second episode was a carbon copy of the first episode. So I thought, OK, it's one of these Netflix shows where they found a formula and they're going to do the same thing. 
So I just skipped through to find the bits with Markle in. And they were literally about a minute long each. Someone actually added up how many minutes she'd done in 11 seasons. 11 seasons. And I think it came to less than an hour. And I can well believe it. She'd kind of flounce in, slam down some papers on some guy's desk and go, file it yourself. And then mince out, wiggling her little ass. What we used to call back in the day, something for the dads. Anyone in the UK remember that? I don't know if you have it in other countries. Doctor Who. Doctor Who, children's TV show, often had an assistant. There was one particular bikini-clad cave woman and everybody called her something for the dads. So the dad would go, oh yeah, I'll watch Doctor Who with you. That's what Megan was. She was a puff piece in suits. Nothing more, nothing less. So... <coughs> Royston, who, let's not forget, was utterly evil towards Yankee Wally, as was Ellie Hall, as was Christopher Boozy. Oh, who starred on Harry and Meghan's net? Sorry to keep ramming that one home. I'm not ever going to let that one go. So these psychopaths that have been threatening us all, tracking some of you down with, I mean, they didn't need to with me. I say who I am and where I live. But some of you who want your anonymity, and quite rightly too, that actually they tracked you down to where you live. There were other YouTubers who had terrible downfalls. I'm not going to go on about that, but we all know these were just Suits fans. They were just Suits. So brace yourselves. That's the narrative that's going to be spun as the divorce unfolds. And I've no doubt this divorce will unfold. I don't care if Harry and Meghan got together tomorrow and snogged the shit out of each other on camera to make out there together. I've been able to see, and so have a lot of you guys, they haven't been together for at least 18 months. It's all bullshit. It just comes across as disingenuous bullshit. So my question is to these PR firms who may or may not employ troll farms. Now a troll farm isn't necessarily a building where lots of people sit and they, they're, they're tweeting away. They can be, well they quite often are people who work from home. And these companies will advertise jobs like $800 a week and they assign a celebrity to you. And you've got to say all nice things about the celebrity and all horrible things about their arch nemesis along those lines. Who vets these people? How do these PR companies know whether they are employing a psychopath? Perhaps a ring. You know, I can't say the word because, oh, of course, YouTube will freak out. Um, what does it rhyme with? Uh, Shido ring, if you know what I mean. Be begins with a P. How do they know that they're not employing a load of online predators? I mean, after all, we have one lady who's in court in Leeds. That was a diehard Meghan Markle fan. There's another man who's been arrested. That's a diehard Meghan Markle fan and Prince Harry fan. Who are these people? And as time goes by, it's going to unfold and everyone's going to find out who they are, what their motivations were. So these PR firms that just recruit people online without a second thought, when they're dealing with a celebrity or a politician's or a public figure's reputation, don't you think that they should check who's tweeting? Um, and are they genuine Suits fans? Or are they lunatics? Or are they just low-life Dog people who, and I don't mean dog lovers, you know, lay with a dog with fleas. Maybe they're just lowlifes who will literally do anything for a buck. That's the most likely, isn't it? Someone comes along and offers them a few quid and says, oh, it's only a few death threats. You can do it anonymously. No one's ever going to find out who you are. Whoops. Someone's in court. Wasn't that person the one who said, Nino, Nino, no one's knocking on my door? Yes. Well, that is unravelling. It is all unravelling. I want you all to remember each and every single one of the threats and insults that you received, not because you were attacking anybody, simply for defending and bigging up the British monarchy. That's why you got threats from, apparently, Suits fans. wonder if Patrick J. Adams fans like issuing death threats. I dare say not. I wonder if a lot of celebrities fans like issuing death threats <coughs> and bomb threats. 
I'll wager not. Oprah Winfrey, your once glittering career, did you ever think that you would be laying with a bunch of dogs with fleas like this? Mmm. So my point is, yes, I believe they're getting divorced. I don't know what's going to happen with old Hazza. And I don't really care. He's not going to be on that balcony. If he is ever on that balcony again, you'll hear me scream the loudest. But I do believe every human being has a right to, you know, just go away and live their life quietly. So I have no idea what the hell his plans are. Um, whether it's Portugal or whether the Portugal thing is just a puff piece Megan put out because maybe once upon a time Harry said might be nice to live in Portugal we wouldn't be that far from the Duke of Westminster for example Duke of Westminster has a huge property here in Spain um, <coughs> and it, it never hurts to try and get in with old Hugh of course they didn't get the invite to the wedding um, so maybe once upon a time and she said no absolutely not I'm not moving to Europe and then maybe she put the puff piece out about Portugal like Okay, maybe Portugal. Now the purse strings have been snipped. The influence is gone. The power base is gone. And I think we can all see that. Because the little psychopaths are becoming quieter by the day. Have you noticed that? I wonder why. And then we see all these weathercocks. Uh, who, at one point, were just as critical of us. Um, as Christopher Boozy, for example. And one by one, like rats leaving a jump, a sinking ship, and one by one, like weathercocks, all popularity, all they'll probably join our side. And I want all of you guys to remember that we're the ones that went through all the shit, us and all of the YouTubers together. We went through all this shit. You guys went through all this shit, and we're going to be fobbed off with, oh, it's because Megan had suits fans. Do me a favour. Oh no. I, for one, am not going to allow that narrative to be rewritten. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, theories and opinions. Graham and I are off out to dinner for his birthday. Thank you very much for listening, as always. <laughs>